if I were Mamet and I'd written this, you know, I'd have moved away from whatever he wrote it on in 1992, punched the air and thought, that is just, I'm really happy with that, that's just fantastic. But then, as the years go by, <laughs> he must have felt slightly plagued by the brilliance of it because it's one of those moments that you hit as a creative artist, which I think he, he probably could never surpass. For me, it's a play that defines a, a decade, it defines a generation, it defines mm. a moment, it defines... It's like what Othello is to jealousy. You know, I don't think either of them are particularly likeable characters. I think they're both flawed, but I think they both also have arguments that are very just. And as long as you can sort of hold on to the truth of why your character is saying the things that they say and why they do the things they do, you, you have to understand that in order, I think, to portray that in a truthful way. You know, it's like any court case, I suppose, really. You know, you've got to go on the evidence that you've got as a, as a jury member or an audience member. And uh, two members of the jury, two members of an audience can see the same incident and mm. interpret it in different ways. And ultimately what happens between two people behind closed doors, which this is in, in its reality, you know, is then open to anybody's interpretation outside of that. And there's a line in it, well, there's endless lines in it we could quote, but there's one where uh, Carol says, you know, her, her, her case is, you put your arm around me. Now, John, puts his arm, he, he well, you see, I'm doing it already now, I'm trying to defend it, but yeah, he, he moves yeah. to comfort her. But if you just have the phrase, he put his arm around her, that that would probably mean that, you know, which is a lascivious thing. And if you just see that written Was down, that he put his arm around thing her. Then? No, I, no, I haven't okay. begun to be a lascivious no. thing. That was comforting. <laughs> yeah. But one thing I think, I think that interests me, and you can never really quantify it, is when I saw it in its original version in 1992, 93, um, I remember the outrage, I remember how I felt. And there are certain moments in it now where I think, well, we've got used to that now. And 20 years on, the world mm. has changed. So, for instance, when there's the bit where I, I use the phrase good men and true about a committee which includes the woman. And Claire's character, Carol, makes the point that it's a sexist phrase. I mean, 1993, I think a lot of people are going, yeah, but you know what we mean by that. But now we've moved on and think, yeah, actually, if there's a woman on that committee, you shouldn't refer to them as good men and true. It's, it's, it ignores her presence there. Mm. So I wonder how much more sympathy or understanding there is of, of Carol's point of view now, how much it's moved that way. And as I say, you can't quantify that. Maybe somebody can. Somebody at the university should do that. That's what they should do, <laughs> quantify the differences in the reactions to see how far we've come in 20 years. Mm. In terms of learning the lines, I think it's probably the same type of thing. I mean, once, once the lines were learned, it's then finding the musicality of it, isn't it, that, mm. was, that you know, took some time. But it's one of those things that when it... When it goes wrong, it's so frustrating. But when it's right, it's amazing and magical, and and it it just flows so wonderfully. So it's something we mm. kind of have persevered with, isn't it? Well, I think we've we've been lucky. Well, I, I, I say I've been lucky in working with Claire that that her attitude to to acting is the same as mine. And and when it's just two of you, if you come at the idea of acting, your theories of how to to portray character and language on stage, and you've got different points of view, it could have been a real nightmare. Mm. But we we both. I think without even having addressed it for a long time, realise that we work in the same way mm. and like to approach things in the same way and react to exactly what's given on the stage, which is just how it should be. But if you're the sort of actor or, you know, who, who wants things to be the same every time, you can't really do that in a playlist, no, can you? you? you can't, actually. To a point you can, to a point you do, but you have to listen to everything. And if Claire says a line differently one night, you know, it has to affect me and that means that, and vice versa, and it means you're alive on stage and, and Claire is so alive on stage and that's... It's rare that, you know, that, and lucky that we found each other really to do this play. You said that wonderful thing there, didn't you? That, um, oh, definitely. That, Mama, <laughs> that you said that yes, Mama right. kind of wants you, that, you know. If it doesn't affect you as an actor, it hasn't worked on you. Yeah. Yeah, the play. It's thrilling. It's, it's absolutely thrilling, but terrifying at the same time. We both said that we, we get nervous every night and yeah. never feel you know it enough. And it's genuinely the hardest thing I've done. But I think that is reflected, I hope, in the way it inspires the audience, because it's like an unusual piece of music. You know, mm. you've, you've never heard anything like this before. As an artist, as an actor, a writer, whatever you do on stage, you always hope that it will provoke response afterwards, mm. really, from the day when you become an actor, don't you? Yeah, do? even if they hate it, at least there's, there's something. Yeah, but you hope they talk about the issues, you know, when mm. you're doing TIE or drama school stuff or whatever else, what drives you on is let's talk about the issues of the play. And generally, <coughs> without being, whatever the word is, too, too dismissive, it doesn't happen. You hope it will, and you come out and you see your friends or people in the foyer afterwards, and they go, oh, well done, Jordan. And they go, but with this play, and I think almost uniquely, mm. 
with this play. People will, you can hear them talking about it, arguing about it, being embarrassed about how they felt, not sure how they felt about it, but knowing they felt something. And yes, mm. as you said, sometimes wanting to talk to their spouse and argue and say, that's what, you see, that's what it's like. And you know, no, 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 no. And you can see this sort of fear of, no, let's not open this up too much because <laughs> yeah. there are so many issues. So yeah, it's, 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 it's such a rich play. It's a very oh. rich experience for us. And I think a very rich experience for an audience.